Hello, I'm Charles from Charles in Photography. Today we're going to be talking about what aperture settings to use when photographing wildlife and to be more precise, photographing bird life. Whether you're photographing at 200, 300, 400 or 500 mil. Now I know this is a very contentious issue. Some people say you should photograph at around f8 to give you a sharp image. Others like me, I actually prefer to stay on f5.6 which is wide open on this lens for nearly all of my bird life photography. Now some people will say that photographing at f8 will give you a sharper image but as I will show you through the photos that I have taken for this tutorial you will see firsthand that there is very little difference between photographing at f5.6 f8 or f11 but for me the reason why I actually photograph at f5.6 most of the time is to keep my ISO at the lowest possible settings throughout the day now this is something that a lot of people don't realize or don't really pay attention to is that when you raise your f-stop from f5.6 to f8 you are actually doubling your ISO now I will state that when I shoot wildlife I either shoot in shutter priority or these days I shoot in manual mode so I set my shutter speed manually I set my aperture manually and I let the ISO do its own thing so if I'm photographing a bird at 1 500th of a second at f5.6 and for example the ISO is at 200 if I go to f8 the ISO will double to 400 if I go to f11 the ISO will double again to ISO 800 now in the middle of the day that's not a big deal but most of the time we don't shoot birds and all that most of the wildlife during the middle of the day where most of the time we're out early morning or late afternoon where there isn't much light or we are actually in the shade and this is where we can actually have a much higher ISO which actually gives us more background noise I will also show you that the other downside of using a f-stop of f8 or f11 is that you don't get that very smooth or creamy background so that your background actually tends to sort of blend into your foreground image when we're photographing wildlife this is not what we're after like if I'm photographing a little kingfisher on a perch and the background is a bit cluttered I'm going to try to make that cluttered background as smooth and as blurry as possible to really highlight my kingfisher now all the images that you see here I will actually post a link in the bottom of this video that I've actually created a web page on my website where all these images can be seen and you can actually download the full size image well it's actually been sized at 4000 pixels wide that you can actually look at on your device whether it's your PC laptop or whatever type of device this will give you a very good idea of how sharp these images are even at f5.6 so now let's go in and I'll actually show you all these images that I have taken and why it is so handy to actually shoot at f5.6 now these are the images that I actually took for this tutorial we have a eastern great egret we have a water dragon we have a fake little kingfisher here a little kookaburra that's an ornament at home we also have some teal ducks here let's look at this first image here which is of the eastern great egret now this bird was taken at 500 mil and it was around 15 meters away from me which is about the distance that most of the time I will shoot at this you can see it was taken at 1 800th of a second f5.6 because there was a lot of daylight around the ISO was only at 125 and if you look in the background here the background is actually quite blurred and if we click on the bird itself you can see that the bird is actually quite sharp now watch what happens when we go to f8 
can you see all of a sudden we can actually see a little bit more of the background and now the ISO has gone up to 250 at f11 the ISO is at 500 and look at the background it is actually very discernible compared to if we go back to f5.6 look at that now this bird really didn't move it just took a couple of steps sideways so the neck and all that moved a little bit but the distance between myself and the bird didn't change and this is why I actually like shooting at f5.6 and really if you look at these and if you download the images you'll actually see that I actually had the focus point on the head the head is sharp at all of these settings now the next photo was taken of a water dragon now it was actually quite shady and because it had been moving a little bit I actually set the shutter speed to 1 640th of a second again we started at f5.6 and look at the ISO it is at ISO 1600 if we click in you can see that there's not that much noise there is a bit of noise there but look at the background it's nice and blurry and it's really highlighting the lizard now at f8 we can actually start seeing our background is less blurry but also we're getting more noise and look at this iso here we're now at iso 2500 now we are at f11 and at iso 3200 and you can see that the noise is starting to get into the image but not only that the background here is starting to be quite noticeable and it's really detracting from our lizard compared to the image that we shot at f5.6 and this is why I tell people that you should really be using the lowest f-stop possible so you can have a separation between your subject and your background because if you don't have that separation your subject will actually tend to bl blend into the background and that's not what we're after you have to think like wildlife photography is like portrait photography you have a model in this case it is a water dragon you have your background and you're actually trying to blur your background so that your model stands out so our next image this is a little ornament that I have at home and I took this to really show you the difference between using f5.6 f8 and f11 this little ornament was around 12 meters away from me the background is another five to six meters away now you can see at f5.6 we have a very nice blurred background so you can just imagine a little kingfisher sitting on a perch and there's trees a little bit further away even though this looks a little bit cluttered because it's so blurry our little kingfisher here actually stands out quite well now this was taken quite late in the afternoon at around 4 30 at my place so we're at f5.6 and we have an ISO of 500 this is a close-up image so I've actually zoomed in 300% in this and you can see the image is very sharp so some people will say well I shoot at f8 because I have a sharper image what I tell people is you can listen to other people what they say but take some test samples with your own camera with your own gear at roughly about the distance that you normally shoot I normally shoot birds anywhere from about 10 to 20 meters so this is where I'd actually set up test subjects to actually see at f5.6 f8 and f11 and I found that with my gear whether I was using my Nikon D7500 or the D500 that I've just bought now this lens is very sharp even wide open at f5.6 so this is the aperture that I use for most of my images now the next image was taken at f8 and you can see the ISO has jumped to 1000 but look at our background it's starting to be discernible there's really no difference between 5.6 and f8 now at f11 look at our ISO it is at 2000 I could easily cope with ISO 2000 now look at our background it's actually looking very cluttered now these are golden cane palms there's a dead leaf over here 
and you can see the yellow where a bit of the sun is shining and it's starting to fade and compare this to this image here taken at f5.6 can you see the difference look at that at f5.6 we have a very blurred background but f11 our background is actually getting quite cluttered and it's detracting from our subject now at times I will use an aperture greater than f5.6 like f8 or f11 the reason I will do that is because there might be a few birds together and I want to try to get all of these birds in relative focus now only one will be in very sharp focus which is the bird that I have locked focus on but the others that are most of the time will be just behind it will be very discernible compared to an image that I would have taken at f5.6 now this image of some grey teals highlights this why sometimes you should increase your aperture but only when you're trying to get images like this not just your day-to-day -day bird photos so there were some great teals there was four of them around on the morning that I took these test shots at f5.6 the ISO was 200 and these ducks were around 15 odd meters from me you can see I locked in focus on the first duck here and by the time we're looking at the fourth duck which is only about 60 to maybe 70 centimeters behind the first duck you can see that it's actually quite blurred now the next image taken at f8 ISO is 400 and now we can actually start seeing that our background ducks here are slightly more discernible when we get to f11 can you see that even the third duck here is actually quite clear it's not as sharp as our first duck here but it is very noticeable but our background here is much less blurred compared to this image but for an image like this when I'm actually trying to highlight and show well I saw a small group of grey teals at Lake Eden using f11 would be warranted now I would only attempt images like this when there is a lot of daylight around I wouldn't be trying this first thing in the morning or very late in the afternoon when there is less light about because my ISO would most likely be through the roof like 3200 or ISO 4000 and the image would actually be quite grainy now as you could see by the images that I just showed this lens the Nikon 200 to 500 mil f5.6 is very sharp wide open at f5.6 it's just as sharp at f5.6 than f8 now this is my gear now if you have the same lens and it's not sharp at f5.6 then maybe you need to fine-tune the lens but this video is not about fine-tuning the lens or anything like this this is just a field test that I have done with my lens to show people how good this lens is at f5.6 compared to f8 and f11 and the side effects of using a aperture of f8 and f11 on your wildlife photography because I firmly believe that when we're out photographing wildlife when I'm talking about wildlife I'm only talking about bird life and all that the goal still is that you want to separate your subject from your background so this is why I state quite fervently that I try to keep my aperture as low as possible if you want to see the images just like I told you at the start of the video I will place a link down in the description and it will send you to my website and you can download all the images and you can actually peruse them to see how good these images are whether taken at f5.6 at f8 and f11 now if you've got any comment and all that leave them down in the comment box below I know this is a bit of a contentious issue and I know some people prefer to use different apertures but I really feel that for me I like using this lens wide open at f5.6 unless like I showed in the last images where I'm trying to get a group of wildlife where they're birds or whatever in relative focus to actually display that scene 
Thank you for watching the video. This is Charles for Charles in Photography. Bye for now.